When I saw the new Obsidian Canvas feature, the first thing I thought of was these sticky notes or post-its, most common brand name for these. And that's because I used to be a teacher and I would use these a lot in my classroom. They provided a great way to get everybody involved in the class to show, to bring forward ideas from different places and then we could arrange them, move them around and put them up in the most appropriate order, the right priority that they should have there. And also they're a great way to have these emerging ideas that come up from the classroom and then create an activity based on that that would help people to deal with them. The new canvas feature from Obsidian has some similarities with these sticky notes. Now, it's not so uh, participatory from multiple people, unlike something like Miro or Mural, but it has that idea of spatial arranging and that these little ideas can be sparks that we can move and arrange around. So I want to show you in this video how I've started to use the Obsidian Canvas, a couple of use cases I've found, and uh, what the benefits I've seen from it, as well as a couple of little issues that I've found. So hello, we're in Obsidian now, and the first thing to cover is how to set up uh, the Canvas plugin. And so it's core plugin, so you want to go into core plugins and then search down to find Canvas. Let's see, where are you? Canvas is actually at the top because it's a new one and I've already turned it on, but normally by default it'll be off, so you need to turn it on. And then once you've turned it on, you will get uh, settings. And if you click on settings, it takes you to the Canvas settings here. So you have some default behaviors, like you can change if the mouse will pan or zoom, you can change if the command drag shows the menu or adds extra things, uh, display card labels, you can have that on all the time or have it off. Uh, I think I'm actually going to turn it on hover. Snap to grid, I think that's a good one. Snap to objects is quite useful. Zoom threshold, okay, cool. So we've activated it, so now we can create our own uh, canvas. So let's uh, create one. We could do this one of two ways. We could click on the uh, canvas button in the sidebar to create a new canvas, or we could use command panel, start typing canvas, and there you see the option create new canvas. So that's the one I'm going to do because that's the kind of thing I would do normally. And so I've got a fresh canvas. And I think what I would like to do is uh, because I've been writing a bit about the spiritual disciplines, why don't I create a canvas on uh, prayer? That could be a very interesting one to do. And I think, uh, so now I need to add a card. Let's do that. I can just add a card, add a note. I can add a card, which is just default bit of information. So I could put in prayer here, for example, prayer habits. Uh, I could even use this just to brainstorm some rough ideas and put them down. Then, or, or I could add a note from my vault. So let's see if I have one on prayer. Resources, notes, prayer. I do. Look at that. Okay. So that's probably going to be very useful. Let's move that over there for now. And then what else could I do? I could add some media. Do I have any media on prayer? I don't think so. Nope. Okay. Uh, I could add a web page on prayer. Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. At the bottom, I can add a card, I can add a note, or I can add some media. Now, going through my note on prayer, let's see what we have here. I'm hovering on it so I can start scrolling. If you don't scroll, then it will just move or zoom. So you need to click it to be able to scroll through your note. Now I've got a couple of books here, so let's uh, let's just drag that and bring it out. So as you saw, I just clicked on, when it was active, I clicked on the link and I dragged it out. If it's not active and you try to click on the link, it will just move the cards around. So I've dragged that one out. Let's now connect that there. And let's bring out uh, Richard Foster. His book is the chapter on prayer there. Whoops, does that work? Nope, okay, let's activate and pull, pull it out. Let's pull it over there, okay, and then we can move you uh, do I have the chapter on prayer there? No. Okay, let's, uh, so actually let's, uh, send. Okay, I have very rough notes all in here. Okay, so I've got this note here. I can move you down. 
uh, that can also link there. And what I can, whoopsie, now that I've got a couple of notes, uh, the common theme between these two is these are both books. So I've just highlighted them both, dragged my mouse to highlight, and I'm going to create a group, books on prayer. So I have a couple of books there. You can see the nice little cover, that one there. I've got that there. Now that's interesting. I've got this note here about the types of prayer uh, that I could do there. Um, maybe I could... I could add some of those. So now that I'm thinking about it, Pete Grieg, he's from 247 Prayer, and uh, maybe that would be good to add about their web page. So I could just uh, drop in that web page there, have a little preview of their web page. Um, I'm going to move you, just going to move you over there a bit. And uh, yeah, why don't I also, while I'm at it, add in their uh, prayer course as well because that could be useful I think I can even if I click on it I think I may even be able to click on start the prayer course let's see if we can even just get up view sessions okay session one okay can I I think it's on YouTube as well so I could get the YouTube video. Why don't I just quickly do that? Okay, so I've got that uh, add web page. So let's paste it there. So now I've got that first video from the prayer course. So I could put all the different session videos coming off this. I could have them linked out coming off from here. Whoops. Let's just do that. I could have a link going to all of them. And this, of course, comes from here. That could be grouped together and of course these are all from pete so let's have that coming from from there actually why not because it uh, these are all from pete so why don't i just group those as a separate group from pete uh, uh yeah, resources from him i wonder actually i read a book by him years ago which was on God on mute. Have I got that? No, I haven't. Okay. So I don't have that in there, but that could be interesting to go through as well. Now, I don't have a note here on those, on the help thanks why, which would be different types of prayer. This is any and once thing. It would be kind of interesting to go through to maybe build that out a bit more, add in some others. And now that I'm thinking about this note, might I just open that one there. Uh, ah. Oh no, because um, I need to. Why don't I just open my note on prayer? Oh, I've done this because there's the other one, which is the Acts one, which is uh, adore, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. I wonder if there's some other ones which are here. So let's call this one pray. Got help, thanks. Wow, well, uh, three types of prayer. Prayer, like hanging them out. Okay, we've got that. I um, So, let's see. Maybe I could uh, create notes or we'll, we'll go into some more detail on each of those. Anyway, uh, have I written any essays on, on prayer? I can't remember. So, as I've been here, I've uh, remembered that there is another book I read which has some stuff on prayer that is in deeper in chapter 8 he talks about uh, breathing and the comparison of of uh, prayer and Bible reading is breathing and that is an interesting idea of like prayer is breathing so maybe I could maybe I could add something in here prayer is breathing because I'm fairly sure Foster talks about it in a different way as well, which is very interesting. But Martin Luther made this quote. I don't think I've got that in my vault. Let's see, Martin Luther quote. No. Uh, prayer is like reading. Nope. So there is that one. So I could. Uh, why don't I add that as a new note?
is no more. Oops. Okay. So I could just quote, I'll just put that one there. You can tag old Martin Luther there. So let's go back to this one. That's an interesting quote. I could start a section over here, actually, maybe of quotes, because uh, there are a few that I have. So I could start building up a section. That would be quite an interesting thing to do there, building up a section on prayer. And uh, also, as part of um, this uh, project I've been doing, this uh, Ship 30, I've been writing some things on prayer so I could perhaps take these articles they're actually not in my vault because because of the way I wrote them maybe I could bring them into my vault and then that would give me some other topics I could see some trends uh, for for things that I could carry on working on there so this is this is a brand new note you can see how it started and how the fact that I've got these different media that I've actually got like even what live web pages, it's a really interesting layout. But let me show you some established uh, notes and bolts that I've, I've been working on. So I'm quite into visual note taking. So why don't I just show you visual frameworks? So I set up this, um, this canvas where I was just putting down some different frameworks, different ways of laying out ideas uh, visually. And uh, initially I was just like, putting down as many as I could think of. Uh, I got down a few common patterns. Uh, using Excalidraw, I would create them in a new Excalidraw note, then just put them down. And then I started to look through how they are kind of related. So I, I at first I thought the spreadsheet is kind of like the popcorn because you have lots of different little points there. But then I realized that actually it's closer to the hierarchy one because the spreadsheet framework helps you to see the relationships and how they're connected. You know, A and one, you've got A1, which are together. And then, uh, whereas hierarchy, it comes down there. Uh, and then Venn diagram as well, you've got separate, or if they are part of the same, part of the whole. Uh, so then I grouped these ones together because in a way, a grid layout is, is a lot like popcorn. Popcorn is just a bit more free form, could be many points, grid layout these are separate points that are together um, and then a column is can be like a grid but where you only have usually three in my opinion uh, rather than uh, four at the same time columns can have common points that go across this is quite a common thing to do like have a person or business a company at the top and then you have like facts about them and you just compare the differences between them in, in a column. So in, from that respect, actually, as I look at it now, it's kind of like a spreadsheet as well. Uh, so, so anyway, I was looking through these and thinking, how do they group? Well, they're, they're quite similar to each other because these all are useful to describe a what or are useful to look at a problem, different parts of a problem, um, giving strict definitions of it. Whereas Comparing that to a roadmap, which was the initial one I had down here, a roadmap shows a path, a journey that you're going from where you are now to where you want to go. And a flowchart is more similar to that in that it shows a process that you have to work through. So this could be for transformation or it could be a regular repeated process as well. So, so there's just an example of how I've started to put these down and I'm gonna add more frameworks and perhaps I'll reorganize them again get rid of some of these groupings there. But I think the one that I find most interesting uh, for me at the moment is, uh, let's open it up here. Um, I'll just show the BS722. Uh, this is uh, the latest course I'm taking. And here's how I started to organize my course notes uh, in a sort of traditional style. I've got like my assignments listed here. I've got the key dates here, my reading list, which is actually uh, embedded in so I can see that there it's on its own separate note as well and uh, you can see that I have a reference to where I've got that resource um, but then I had thoughts about what if I made a canvas for this rather than uh, organizing it in a more traditional style and I started off just putting things down with some regular notes showing uh, you know the, the top level 
and my assignments, my reading over there, and those are related because I have to do certain amount of reading for my assignments. Um, but then I thought I could put down my essays once I've written them and while I'm working on them. Second one's the second one that I have to work on. I haven't written it yet. Uh, and then I thought, well, I can I can put in some of the videos that I've been assigned to watch. And then I can group the videos together that are related to the assignments. And so I'm starting to get this this grouping, this layout here. And um, it's, it's I'm going to add another assignment there when I'm ready to do it. I can see things here. And it just gives me a quick overview of different resources, different readings. I can access all at once and I can quickly and easily jump between them. So it's quite a useful dashboard just for seeing things. So there's a couple of ways that I've been using uh, Obsidian Canvas so far. I'm really interested to see how I continue to use it, how it continues to evolve. But I hope this has been useful also to helping you see how you can use it, uh, some of its functionality as well. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. And I hope to see you in the next one.